dear students today we are going to discuss about the plant derived recombinant antibodies plant derived recombinant antibodies so before starting with the antibodies from the plants we need to go a little bit info how we are able to get the plant recombinant plants earlier biopharmaceuticals were using mammalian cell line for the production of antibodies for the production of antibodies but due to their cost effectiveness and the prone to the pathogens these were not these antibodies antibodies were not feasible for usage so later on few decades back scientists tried to work out on the plants so they made recombinant plants where they were able to get the where they were able to get the proteins enzymes or monoclonal antibodies then when they were able to get these monoclonal antibodies then they were able to utilize these antibodies for diagnosis and the therapeutic purposes to the humans so before going to the nda recombinant proteins we had to first select the which gene which we want to incorporate into the plants so first here is the incorporation and the selection of the genes now second we are having different techniques by which we will be able to insert our gene of interest into the plants we have studied all these first is the agrobacterium tumefaciens by using the ti plasmid where we can insert our gene of interest into the plasmid then this plasmid or this bacterium is infected to the plants by which they are able to incorporate into the genome when our gene of interest is incorporated into the genome then from this we will be able to produce the plants then in plants we have to go for screening whether the gene of interest has placed it at a correct position in the plant genome or not then the second we are having the another technique for trans the transgenic is the by inco gene incorporation is done by the electroporation method or by polyethylene glycol or directly we can use gene gun we can use gene gun or the micro injection where we will be able to insert our gene of interest into the plants now we are having transgenic plant the most peculiar thing about the plants is that they are able to carry out post translational modifications these are these plants are able to carry out the post translational modifications as then when there is a proper modification of the antibodies then only we will be able to use these antibodies for diagnosis and the therapeutic purposes there are some scientists who call these monoclonal antibodies derived from the plants as plantibody there are some scientists who call these who call these antibodies which have been derived from the plants are called as also plantibodies these plant bodies are having ability to neutralize a particular pathogen or a toxin so we can say the transgenic plants are able to produce antibodies which are similar to humans they act in a similar way as human antibodies act the first approval of this using the plant plant bodies was carried out in 2012 so first approval of monoclonal antibodies from the plant sources were got approved in 2012 then at the end of the 2013 12 different monoclonal antibodies were produced which were used for diagnosis and therapeutic purposes which were used for diagnosis and therapeutic purposes so even if we will talk about the we are having one monoclonal antibody which is having biggest selling therapeutic in the market which is the biggest selling monoclonal antibody and that antibody is used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis that antibody is used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and that antibody is rituximab 
this is rituzumide is the antibody which is the plant derivative plant derived and this is used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis if we will and this rituzumide is a we are able to produce this antibody on a large scale up to the capacity of 250000 liters means 250000 liters we are having big fermenters where we are able to culture this rituzumide in the plant cells obviously so if we are using the fermenter it means the plant cell are in the suspension culture in the liquid form so there we are able to get higher number of monoclonal antibodies so even we can get monoclonal antibodies for common diseases like we will be able to produce antibodies for alzheimer disease we can produce it for hiv or we can produce it for other diseases like dental care as well but for that we have to increase our production rate and if that production is complete or the transgenic or if we are able to produce the monoclonal antibodies for these common diseases then there will be the then there will be the increase in the production even today we are having different food products by which we are able in which we are having different monoclonal antibodies like we are having different crops which are able to produce antibodies and these crops are approved by the us food and drug administration the different crops which are able to make monoclonal antibodies have also got approval from the us food and drug administration and these crops are now grown on industrial scale so we will discuss about which plants are those we will discuss that also the plant plant antibody is uh, produced by the transgenic mechanism we know when we have to insert the gene we have to insert that gene along with the promoter so this promoter should be able to divert this target this plant antibody either to the endoplasmic reticulum or to the apoplast targeting of proteins 7sm you have studied this thing so whatever the monoclonal antibodies we are able to produce in the plants it should be targeted to either to the apoplast or to the endoplasmic reticulum when these transgenic and or the polypeptide which is coding for the monoclonal antibodies are targeted to the endoplasmic reticulum there the internal modifications occur we know this thing that modification is called as post translational modifications where certain carbohydrate groups are attached to the polypeptide chain so this attachment of carbohydrate group to the polypeptide chain into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum is called as glycosylation process so this glycosylation process occurs at the end terminal of the polypeptide chain and to make it efficient we should be able to have this polypeptide chain should be able to have signal peptide as we know when there is a growing polypeptide chain in the cytoplasm it should be having signal sequence this signal sequence should be recognized by the endoplasmic reticulum then only the post translational modification to this polypeptide chain will occur three different types of signal polypeptide chains are uh, used for the production of the monoclonal antibodies in the plants first is the plant signal peptides second is murine leader peptides or third we can use yeast propeptides plant signal peptides murine leader peptides or yeast propeptides first is the signal plant signal peptide this is the plants itself signal sequence which direct this plants polypeptide chain to the endoplasmic reticulum now the another is the murine leader peptides this is pharmaceutically important product scientists have used this murine leader peptides in pistachia pastoris scientists have used murine leader peptides in pistachia pastoris where they saw that we are having 
higher yield of antibodies and these antibodies were cheap and due to this mutant peptides the growth of the um, antibodies was fast so most of the when we are talking about the monoclonal antibodies scientists tried to use murine leader peptides as a signal peptide sequences so for these uh, when we have to go for the production of the monoclonal antibodies we have to insert gene of interest along with the promoter it has been observed that mostly the common promoter which is used for production of the plant bodies are p35s so if i will talk about the if i will talk about the most commonly promoted user for the in the transgenic plant for the production of antibodies are p35s if we will take example if we have to produce the antibody igm there we can use p35s promoter and the location of this was protoplas and the accumulation rate was 0.01 percent and the organ where which this igm was able to produce was the leaf it has been observed that the organ the it has been observed that the production of these antibodies depends on the plant species as well it has been observed that the production of antibodies depends on the plant species as well even it depends on the location where this antibodies are producer in the plant location of the production as well as we have igg1 antibody we were using this promoter we are using p35s again the location where the protopla protoplas then when we were producing this igg1 in the leaf it was having accumulation of 0.055 percent but when this igg1 were able to produce in callus their accumulation rate has increased it was 1.3 percent when we were when we were accumulating these igg1 in leaf we were having 0.055 percent it means less than one percent but when the same process was occurring but the organ we have used for its accumulation were callus it has increased its accumulation and its accumulation were 1.3 percent and we sometimes it's not always that we will get the complete antibodies we will be able to produce the fragment of antibodies like if we will use the fab one of the components of the antibodies again we have to use promoter p35s location will be the apoplast when we are producing this fab in leaves we are getting 0.044 percent accumulation percentage again if we will use this for the callus so accumulation rate is higher so 0.3 percent so we can say by this we can say in vitro culturing of production of antibodies is higher than under the natural conditions so if we will talk so this was how we will be able to produce our monoclonal antibodies so it is best to grow these anti matlab transgenic cells in under the in vitro condition where we will be having higher accumulation rates where will be having accumulation rate when the antibodies are produced now we have to go for the purification process the purification process of these antibodies can be mechanical disruption of the cells because we are having cell wall there so we have to disrupt it then the all the contents which is present in the cytoplasm will come out so to this cytoplasmic content we have to go for denaturation or the removal of intrinsic proteins so this denaturation or the removal of intrinsic proteins is carried out by giving high temperature and low ph under high temperature and low ph our intrinsic plant proteins are getting denatured but under this condition our antibodies tend to be remain stable so this is a peculiarity of our antibodies which are produced in the plant so plant proteins itself get plant protein itself get denatured 
but our antibodies are stable under these conditions or we can use some other techniques for the purification where we can use different acids and with the different temperature but it depends again it depends on the which type of plant species from which we are able to get our monoclonal antibodies mostly it has been observed that the we are able to produce monoclonal antibodies mostly in the genus nicotina and the production or the culturing of this nicotina is very cheap and safe as compared to animal cell lines as compared to animal cell lines and the production rate of these and the production rate of monoclonal antibodies in plants is high much higher than the production <coughs> in case of mammalian cell line so mostly the common cell line which were used at mammalian cell line the commonly used were chinese hamster ovary cho so this chinese hamster ovary were giving 5 to 10 gram per liter 5 to 10 gram of antibodies per liter for the fermentation was carried out for 12 days so if we will compare this this was only just the 5.7.5 percent per year this was just coming to 7.5 percent per year so we can say that the production in these chinese hamster ovary were very less if we will compare this cell line with the plant cell lines plant cell lines were having higher accumulation rate and higher production rate than the animal cell lines and the one thing is this higher production rate the another thing that the cost investment for the plants is very cheap very low as compared to the mammalian cell line and these mammalian cell line are always prone to the infections viruses they are mostly so if our cell line is infected with the virus that time we can't use those antibodies for treatment for therapeutic purposes then due to th if we will use these infected antibodies which are infected with the virus we will insert this in our bodies then another complication or another viral disorders or viral diseases will be inserted so this will create problems to the human but if we will see if we will um, plants are not having plants doesn't get infected with the viruses which infect humans and when plants are able to produce these antibodies this is a natural phenomena as they are having gene which are getting expressed and which are secreting its product without getting insertion of any antibody into the plant these plants are able to form antibodies in its wild form in its natural form without altering its properties so the antibodies which are produced by the plants are safer to use as compared to the antibodies which are produced in the mammalian cell line even as i said we are having specific antibody production in the specific and specific antibody production is to the specific plants as we have seen in case of aerobdopsis thaliana there is the tenfold higher accumulation there is a tenfold higher accumulation of fab than the full sized antibodies in other words we can say that aerobdopsis thaliana is producing more fab components of the antibodies than the full sized antibodies and their accumulation is very high their accumulation is very high and if we will consider and if we will consider that we are having many it has been concluded with the experiments that we can use yeast for the bioproduction of the monoclonal antibodies we can use insect cell lines for production of monoclonal antibodies we have used mammalian cell lines for the production of monoclonal antibody as well as the plants so and they have experiment which cell line will be best suited for therapeutic and the diagnostic purpose they have see parameters like cost production maintaining cost protein yield therapeutic risk glycosylation and safety and time required in all the parameters plants were the best expression system which were used for the production of 
monoclonal antibodies if we will talk about the production cost for plants plants are having very low cost production as compared to the other bio expression systems like yeast insect and mammals so their maintenance cost is also cheap so if we will talk we are having we are in advantage in using plants for the production of monoclonal antibodies so it's better to use the plants for the production of the monoclonal antibodies so if we, we are having now here what we are discussing now the antibodies are produced either in the fermentation process using plants only plant origin plant cells only or we can directly produce in the plants we can produce and monoclonal antibody directly into the plant if we are culturing these plant cell in the fermenters what will be the steps for its purification what will be the steps involved in its purification so when the cell plant cells are cultured in the fermenter then we have to go for the extraction process this extraction process is simply by the centrifugation we take plant cells we centrifuge it then the proteins will be in the as proteins has been secreted out of the cell so protein will be in the liquid so we have to to remove the plant cells we have to go for the centrifugation process then from the centrifugation process we have to go for filtration we have to go for filtration again i will repeat we are talking about the production of monoclonal antibodies in the fermenter how we will cultivate we have to cultivate it under fermenter then when we have to go for the isolation and purification of monoclonal antibodies these steps has to be followed so we have to take the culture for extraction we have to go for the we have to go for the centrifugation then when centrifugation is carried out then we have to go for filtration when filtration is done with the extract then we have to go for purification and the purification of monoclonal antibodies is mostly carried out by packet bead chromatography method then when again packet bead chromatography method has done then we will go for filtration then we will be able to get pur purified form of monoclonal antibodies this was how we will isolate monoclonal antibodies from the plants which are grown in the fermenters now if we will take another example when we have to take monoclonal antibodies directly from the plants so it will be plant this will be in the plant tissues only right so what we will do we will go for homogenization we have to disrupt the cells so that all the content all the monoclonal antibodies which is present in the cytosol will come out of the cell then we will go for different levels of filtration with the different pore size then we go for membrane absorbent for purification of we can go for membrane absorbent or we can use continuous chromatography then the monoclonal antibodies is from the plant itself we can use two different processes for purification first is the membrane absorbent you are having this in the diagrams and second we can use in the continuous chromatography method when we are getting the extract from the continuous chromatography and from the membrane absorbent then we will be able to get the pure form of monoclonal antibodies so now we are having in our hand we are having pure form of antibodies and in plants we will be able to produce these monoclonal antibodies at a larger scale for immunotherapy purposes for immunotherapy pur purposes these plant derived these plant derived monoclonal antibodies are having many advantages which are beneficial to the humans as whenever we go for recombinant product purification they are always cost effective but when we are using recombinant proteins isolated extracted from the plants their purification cost is very cheap 
and we can use bulk quantity of transgenic product they are able to they are able to store in seeds so we are having ample storage of these monoclonal antibodies and we don't have risk of transmitting disease to the humans because these this is these antibodies are produced by the natural phenomena by the plant not by with any infection or with the antigen so plants are able to continuously matlab produce these monoclonal antibodies even we can use these plants to produce antibodies for its own plant diseases as well we can use plant to produce antibodies for its own plant diseases like they can produce antibodies against the nematodes infection or eliminate the toxic pesticides or they can use elimination of toxic pesticides so in general we can see the applications of monoclonal antibodies from the plant source are cheap these are able to matlab easy to manage safer for human use and the most peculiar thing is we can we when market is in high demand we can produce this at larger scale when the market we are shortage of demand we can customize our production to the small level and different the crops which have been used in case for the production of monoclonal antibodies is the potato soybean alfa alfa rice wheat and tobacco these are the commercially matlab these are at industrial level these crops are utilized for the production of monoclonal antibodies potatoes soybean alfa alfa rice wheat and tobacco and today's research is that the scientists are trying to produce monoclonal antibodies in the fruits so that un- the developing countries will ha- accum- have those fruits as a immune boosters as well so these research are in process so they have not yet succeeded trials are there so we can improve we can have many advantages of plants we can have many advantages of plant for the use of the monoclonal antibody this is high production cost we are having matlab like we don't have high production cost or we can have easy production Pro- they are easily produced highly uniformity of production through the generation to generation as plant grow under natural condition continuously they will be ab- able to produce these monoclonal antibodies but still we are facing some problems like glycolation as these are plant specific so we have to be sure that whatever plant we are using they will be uh, that process will be like that process will be appropriate for our production of monoclonal antibodies means that plant should be able to go for post translation modification accurately for the monoclonal antibodies so sometimes there is the risk of contamination sometimes there is a risk of contamination either from the soil because these monoclonal antibodies we can grow in the plants which are directly under the environmental conditions so there are the organisms which are present in the environment so these plants will get contaminated so this contamination can be will hamper in the production of the antibodies so this was all about the production of monoclonal antibodies